In this video, I want to show you the importance of choosing the right laboratory when you're doing a hair analysis. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to show you the key difference in the top two hair analysis laboratories in the United States. And I'll show you which lab I use and why. So what we're looking at here is um, on the left, this is a hair analysis from Trace Elements Inc. And Really, when you do a hair analysis, you want to choose between two laboratories, trace elements and then analytical research labs, which is the test on the right here. And the reason for this is that these labs use the proper procedure when testing the hair for accurate results. So what that means is they do not wash the hair sample at the lab. So you're going to get accurate levels of the water soluble elements such as sodium and potassium. So when you do a hair analysis, you want to use these two labs. However, even within these two labs, you're going to have some really significant differences that make it important to discern which lab you want to use. So on the left here, the trace elements lab, when you look at these test results, the middle range here is considered the reference range. Okay. And if you look at these minerals, they all look like they're on the low side of the reference range. And to some people, might they might interpret that as being acceptable, although a bit low. And we're looking at just the first four minerals here to start. Calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. These are the minerals that we get a lot of information from on the test. Now, when I transport those numbers to the analytical research labs chart. So th these aren't two separate tests. This is the, just bringing the test results from this chart to a blank chart from analytical research labs. You're going to see that analytical research labs does not use reference ranges. Instead, they use ideal levels. And that's represented by these black dashes across the middle of the chart. And when you look at those same minerals, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, on this chart, you're going to see that they're, they're looking pretty low compared to what, they're, what they look like on the TEI chart, where they're just above the, just inside the reference range. On the ARL chart, these look really low. And this is significant on parts of both the client and the practitioner. When a practitioner looks at the levels here, they might not recognize how severe the problem is. And same thing with the client. When you get your test results back, you say, okay, I'm within the reference range. But really what the reference range is representing is it's a range of minerals that have been gathered from a sick population, basically, because really the only people who do a hair analysis for the most part are people who have tried other testing. They have health issues, so they've tried other testing and finally they find hair analysis and it's kind of a last resort for them. So uh, really the reference range is not a good way to look at mineral levels in the hair. It can be deceiving. In contrast, when we start with ideal levels, we can really see much better what's going on with this person, especially in this situation, because this person has what we call a four lows pattern. And that is when all four of those first four minerals are below the ideal value. Trace elements, they do not recognize this pattern. You can't see it when you get the test results. You can calculate it by determining how low the mineral levels are. But with analytical research labs, you can actually see it very clearly just from looking at the test results. And I say this is important because Dr. Eck, who founded analytical research labs, he came up with a special program for people with a four lows pattern. He found that people with this pattern did not respond well to either of the programs that he would normally set up for a person's metabolic type. So uh, a slow oxidizer program or a fast oxidizer program. Although these people, technically, they are one or the other oxidation types, either fast or slow, he found that 
actually the four lows pattern is sort of a separate metabolic type. And so these people need a separate program, a different type of program in order to fix the metabolic problem. And so this is a good example of even between the two labs that are considered satisfactory for hair analysis, trace elements and analytical research labs, there are significant differences in how the practitioner interprets the test, depending on which lab they use and what the program is going to be for that individual and therefore the results that they're going to get. I use analytical research labs because for one, I really think that the ideal levels, them using ideal levels, even though it's not perfect for a lot of these other trace minerals, I still think it's a much better starting point than using reference ranges like trace elements and every other hair analysis laboratory uses. So that's one example of why choosing a hair analysis laboratory is really critical if I were to use these other labs like doctor's data who do not use the proper procedure, they wash the hair sample at the lab, the differences are even more drastic. With doctor's data, they use these percentiles and it's really hard to read the chart. Same thing with many other hair analysis laboratories. So if you're gonna do a hair analysis, TEI and ARL are the two labs you wanna choose from. I much prefer analytical research labs.